Okay, it's 5.03. It's Tuesday, September the 6th, and we'll call this uh, City Council meeting to order. I'd like to welcome everyone to our meeting. If everyone please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, Deb. Harley. Here. Brad. Here. Rodney. Here. Tyler. Here. Don. Here. Jody. Here. Uh, agenda item number four, I entertain a motion to approve today's agenda. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Vote please, Deb. Harley. Yes. Brad. Yes. Rodney. Yes. 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 Don. Yes. Jody. Yes. Motion carried. Across the mayor's desk, I just want to uh, thank our videographer, Riker Brindley tonight for helping us out there and uh, just hope that everyone was able to enjoy the long Labor Day weekend uh, before the fall schedules certainly begin. I know school will uh, be busy, activities, and uh, we've got a few things planned here at City Hall as well. So it'll be a busy, busy fall. So uh, the council have anything they would like to share? Okay, hearing none, we'll move to an update from the city administrator. Just one announcement to share um, about the uh, Wednesday night, September 7th, so tomorrow from 3 to 6 um, at the Carnegie Long, um, we'll be having our community visioning board uh, design reveal. We have about 15 different boards that um, show some of the concepts in terms of park improvements, trail, transportation enhancements, aesthetics, um, and so we're really excited to see those, so be our first, our, we've seen some drafts, but even as the committee will be our first time seeing the final um, recommendations, um, and you know, encourage folks to come out. They also eventually will be posted on our website as digital copies, uh, but there's some really neat ideas on how we can improve how we're going, and then once we kind of get this set of ideas, we certainly want to be able to do them all. Um, it'll be you know, what, what really um, you know, strikes us, and you know, where are kind of the top projects or priorities we, we want to pursue. So it's been a, uh, a real fun, interesting process. So I encourage people to come out. Um, one of the things that will be kind of neat is we're going to have that one block in the Gregor uh, marked off with tape on how the hypothetical light lane could look like on there, just as kind of a demonstration of that is one option. Um, so folks can, can see that as well. Very good, thank you. Agenda item number uh, seven, this is the citizen's opportunity to address the council with any item that's not on the agenda. Is there anyone you would like to, would you like to come up and identify yourself again, please? And Inspection, no, we passed the inspection. Plus, my wife got a certification of credential of state food safety. Okay. So we we passed the inspection. So now the only thing we waiting, we got a place to park, <coughs> and we have to pay rent. No, every month we have to pay rent. Plus, I believe we have to pull like a mirror, a mirror for the electricity. And that's what costs us more money too. And we want to know if you know if it's possible to get the year, what you call the permit for the whole year. Uh, we can. Well, we're planning to start on between the fifth and the tenth of October. So. I just coming to see if this is possible. If it's not possible mm -hmm. right now, I can pay, you know, the first month, maybe in the future, you know. Mm -hmm. If you get a year deal, we can get it. Yeah. Is this something they come to the city and apply for a permit yeah. for? So, okay. um, Okay. We, um, the transit permit right now is $20 a day or $200 a month is how it's in our code. Okay. Okay, and that's for, what do we charge for a food truck to be at the parks? 
when $20 they come. Dollars a day. Twenty dollars a day for that right now. Okay. Uh, so what we had discussed was just with the popularity of food trucks is over kind of the winter or out of season drafting just a food truck specific ordinance and just dealing with it that way because a transient permit it, it it works but we just it, it doesn't even fit for it all the, the things that we're getting questions on. Um, you know, so I guess my my plan would be you know, at that time you look at it through one of the rate structure and, and how we want to have that. Um, mm -hmm. What options? Um, you know, if the council would like us to you know move forward on that quicker than later, we, we you know certainly can. Um, it's just with everything we have going on right now, kind of lower on the priority with wrapping up construction season. Um, the intent would be to have something in place by next spring. Um, you know, some of the considerations we're you know going to have to make is um, yeah maybe we do a, a month six month. Um, you know, annual permit, what's that fair amount, you know, researching other communities, what's that fair in terms of, you know, brick and mortar, um, you know, places of business that pay property taxes versus, um, you, know, uh, you know, food trucks or, you know, similar thing, you know, they don't, you know, their customers are using the streets to get there, but, you know, they're not paying property tax for those streets. Um, and just, you know, generally how, how we set that up. So um, that would be our plan. Um, to figure that out, you know, over winter and then come up with more needs um, to go into effect here in the spring. Like I said, the council would like us to address any issues with the transient permit or move that food truck ordinance up uh, sooner than later. I appreciate the direction. I think this gentleman was here the last time I did get on Cliff Matt, which is the city clerk email, and the line for city administrators. And what we're charging for a transit permit is pretty much average of all communities, you know, $20 a day, $20 a month type of thing. But a lot of communities are looking at a specific food truck ordinance. But right now, we're right in line with the fitness. Okay, uh, so we want to leave things as it is for now with, for another month or two and then revise things. Is this what you're maybe, I mean, in a, for, in a, for a short time or what? what's thoughts there? Well, I think we want to continue to look at it, like they said. Yeah. I think we need to, that maybe doesn't fit all situations, but I, I don't know how much quicker with things going on they can get to it. It yeah. sounds like a reasonable timeline. I, I do think it needs to be, you know, continue forward and try to make sure we meet that timeline you're thinking. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, just kind of from a workload uh, maybe yeah. standpoint, uh, probably be looking at something that, you know, uh, for the first of the year, Much simpler way to receive permits, issue permits, um, and then whatever fees and the council determines is appropriate. So I guess, yeah, I, to make sure that we have enough time balancing everything we have going on, and we can hopefully you know, write the new ordinance and write it once. You know, if we could kind of look at it late this fall, I think that would you know, be reasonable. Or I guess would be my suggestion. So Do you plan on being open all winter? You're, you're mm -hmm. going to be open through the winter. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And plus, um, I pay like taxes on my house. Mm -hmm. Actually, two houses, and we go to pay taxes. You know, because every like ten dollars is already seventy cents from each ten dollars. So we go to be paying taxes plus we go to pay the rent and the electricity. So all that you know is good for the city. You know. Mm -hmm. Plus good tacos with good salsa, you know. <laughs> so just if you put it on, on mine, you guys can. I'm sorry. You cannot do nothing. I can pay the two hundred dollars for a month, but it's. I think it's a little too much because we got to pay like three hundred dollars off rent just to be parked on the property. Yeah. Plus the electricity, so. Mm -hmm. Plus. 
Yeah, it sounds like the $200, though, is kind of an average of other cities around us from the research that they've done. But um, is, is it fair maybe to give us a couple of months to yeah, sort of look through things and... It's, yeah, because one more thing. Because, like, they say these, like, $200 a month. If you give me a part to put, put it over there, $200 a month is nice, you know? It's nice. But if I have to pay rent plus the $200 plus the taxes, but the $10 of the, the $10 supposedly is going to be like $5 for me plus the food and all the investment mm -hmm. I have to pay. It's got to you know, yeah. just to put it on my please. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Point, point taken, and I certainly want to work with you know food trucks and encourage them because they are really popular. Um, you know, like what, what we've done with parks and alignment domes then there this last year. That was, we set it up, you know, um, organized it with the food truck and it was only there when we were hosting city events and it's because we don't have concessions. Right. And so we found this as a, a reasonable alternative to, we can't provide this amenity so we're gonna basically allow a private vendor to come in. Kind of to induce demand, we just charged them what it would be for the permit, we didn't have any sort of you know, fee to have access um, to the parks. Um, and that, I think, is something on how we handle public property is what we'll need to address in that ordinance. Uh, because, you know, then it's the kind of principle of setting up, um, again, you know, it's basically taking public property and using it exclusively for one, you know, private purpose. Um, and just how, you know, how, how we make a consideration for that, you know, in, in these types of circumstances, you know, maybe on a Friday nights, it's worth having a couple parking spots with food trucks, you know, or something like that. I mean, those are the type of things on how we handle public space that will need to be addressed as well. So just some more research that we need to do and some understanding so we're fair to everyone. And so, yeah. Well, I just want to say thank you for hearing yep. me and have a nice day. You bet. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for uh, the business and look forward uh, to tasting it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I was <laughs> Okay, anyone else like to address the council on anything? Okay, uh, we'll move then to agenda item number eight, which is the consent agenda, and that includes approving the minutes from our August 15th work session and regular city council meeting approving a Class C native wine permit uh, for the train wreck winery, approving a Class E liquor license for Hy-Vee Wine and Spirits, and a Class E liquor license for One Stop Shop number three, approving the bills that are to be paid this cycle, and to approve Jacob's administrator's report. Move to approve. All second. We have a motion from Harley, second from Jody. Any discussion? Vote please, Deb. Harley. Yes. Brad. Yes. Brad. Yes. Yes. Brad. Yes. Brad. Yes. Brad. yes. Motion carried. Um, agenda item number nine is a public hearing. Uh, it's 517 and we'll open that public hearing that's pertaining to a budget amendment. Uh, this is the proposed budget amendment number one to the FY 2022-2023 city budget. Uh, proposed amendment uh, increased expenses by $153,490. Uh, this represents $128,409 in public safety, which is for uh, the uh, law enforcement community liaison position. Um, the city received a grant in that same amount to cover those expenses in the uh, previous fiscal year. Um, and then $25,000 um, under community economic development. Um, and that would be for um, what would be uh, later this year in, in the spring of 23 um, as we begin either uh, removals of treatment of, of, of um, hazardous or uh, vulnerable ash trees as part of our uh, emerald ash core mitigation plan. Uh, we have not received any public comments regarding this. Okay. It's 518 then and we will close uh, this uh, public hearing. And we'll move then to agenda item number 10 under new business. And this is the first reading of an ordinance pertaining to our sanitary sewer charges. So as discussed in the work session, um, and over the last uh, couple of council meeting work sessions, uh, the city's looking at a significant uh, wastewater 
water facility upgrade here um, in the coming years. We're looking at a uh, construction start date in 25, completion, or excuse me, in 24, with completion in 25. Uh, the primary reason for uh, the necessity of the upgrade is for the city to meet um, our current uh, NPDES permit requirements. Um, that's what regulates the uh, effluent outflow uh, from the sanitary sewer facility. Uh, primarily is to uh, add treatment processes uh, to address total nitrogen and total phosphorus uh, coming out of the plant. Um, we completed a uh, nutrient reduction strategy identifying uh, options for how we might achieve that back in 2019. Uh, that identified the technology um, we're proposing to use, which would be an oxidation ditch system. Um, and then since then, uh, the city's uh, sewer engineer, WHKS, has been working on preliminary design for that project. Um, and that report should be done here um, later this month. Um, based on that preliminary, or excuse me, that uh, 2019 reduction strategy report and um, as we progress through preliminary design, the big thing we've been looking at is what our estimated costs to meet these new uh, requirements are. Um, and then looking at our today's revenues and what that difference is um, in order to um, be able to, to adequately fund uh, the construction and not uh, be in violation of our permit. Uh, unfortunately, our current plan does not have the systems in place to treat phosphorus or to treat total nitrogen. Uh, and our plan also has a, a number of different um, aspects of it which we've deferred maintenance on or deferred replacement and knowing this project is coming to, to do a large project and making sure whatever we do fits in with the ultimate the new technology. Um, but we're more or less going to have to build a new sewer plant next to our current sewer plant while maintaining an operating <laughs> operation of our current plant to switch over uh, by October 2025 is when that we need to be switched over. Uh, to get to that, um, the cost is going to be significant. Um, the 2019 report originally identified um, an estimated cost of $13-15 million, and that was in 2019 dollars. Um, since then, we've obviously seen um, you know, significant inflation. Um, this is also the type of work that requires you know, very particular skilled labor, um, as well as um, you know, has a lot of parts and pieces that are very particular. Um, and you know, items that can have several, several month lead time and aren't something you just get off the shelf, they're, you know, they're very custom. Um, so those things certainly are contributing um, you know, to our benefit either. Um, we've uh, put together um, some scenarios and what we're looking at for that project cost, um, which now we're probably looking at construction cost of you know, 15 million more. Um, and we'll have some increased operating costs with the new plant as well. Uh, but we put all those together and we're, we're coming up with a, about a, more or less a, uh, having to double our revenues from where they're at um, today. Uh, the, that um, revenue would need to be in place when we start servicing our uh, bond payments in 20, fiscal year 2026, uh, which would be following the year of construction. <coughs> Um, to get to that, we're proposing um, a series of increases, uh, beginning with a, a mid-year increase um, that would take effect um, with, you know, if the, if the first reading passes tonight, the, the second and third at the, you know, uh, following council meetings, uh, would go into effect in the November uh, 22 bill that goes out, um, and then a series of increases effective July 1 of 2023, 2024, and 2025. Um, as part of that analysis, we looked at you know, the various types of fees that we have in terms of um, service fee, usage fee, and infrastructure fee, and how we balance those. Um, and we, we need to dramatically increase our, our infrastructure and our sewer fee um, as we looked at uh, kind of our system as a whole, as well as comparables to other communities. Uh, we found that our, our small users are extremely low, um, whereas our usage rate is already kind of in a competitive line. Um, so that's where uh, you know, we're, there's no way to, to double your revenues without them being paid all around. Um, but with the uh, requirements that you know the DNR has put on us to, to meet these standards, um, and the, you know, we're going on now a year of about 
four or five years of engineering work to, okay, how do we come up with a plan and a plant that's going to meet these and what's the most, most economical option? You know, what we um, identified with the oxidation ditch system was the, the, the most uh, affordable of, of the alternatives we looked at. Um, and that was prompting, um, you know, the necessity for these increases. Uh, so the uh, ordinance would, again, in that November bill, adjust um, the service fee and the usage fee. The infrastructure fee would stay the same. And then July 1 of every year from 23, 24 to 25, um, that sets automatic increases that would buy uh, FY 2026. We need to make that those uh, uh, payments on our debt to, for this project. We'll be in a position that we can fund operating costs um, and you know our debt service um, you know, based on the best information we have today. You know, certainly as we progress through the project, uh, get more detailed cost estimates and projections. You know, we can adjust the ordinance, um, but I don't see this as going in a way that it's going to be. Oh, we're, we're we don't need as much revenue as we thought. Mm -hmm. uh, so. This will, you know, by going out 2025, none of that could change between now and then, but it, it does give our users or, you know, our households and our businesses, you know, notice that, you know, this is one requirement and helps them project and plan out on, you know, we're having, obviously having to adjust to the requirements we're under and then, you know, but they can have some time to, to adjust and plan for how they're going to um, handle the, uh, the fees that have been passed on in order to um, this plant with our Jake, I know that construction is a few years off on this, and a large part of the construction is probably going to be earthwork and um, cement work, uh, that sort of thing. But as you mentioned, the very specific pieces that are going to be needed, what concerns me is that all the cities our size are going to be needing those specific pieces at the same time. Are we going to have the final design in time that we can maybe get some of those things ordered? I mean, in the end, I'd rather be the city that anticipated and got ahead of the crowd instead of one of them who wished that they had. Um, you know, I'd say we'll have the final design done, um, but in terms of ordering those materials, that's something that would be the, the uh, you know, awarded general contractor. There may be some items you can ask, you know, if it would make sense for us to buy in advance. It is something just, it's got to be this, nothing else. Um, you know, but that would be something that um, once the project's supported, um, you know, the general would, you know, as they're building their bids, then source those. Um, but to that point, you know, my understanding is the DNR kind of knowing the acute circumstances of supply chain um, with COVID has been reasonable to work with in terms of if you get a, a, a piece that's a 14 month lead time you know what, what do you do <laughs> you know, do um, you know so um, you know that's going to be something we'll just have to kind of work through as as we go and if, if we run into those try to figure out a way to get yeah, in advance or you know be up front with the, the folks at the dnr and they were trying our best and usually if you can show them that they're a little maybe reasonable to work with yeah that's when you Say no, we're not. We're not going to comply. That's when things get get serious. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I make a motion. We waive the first reading. Second. We have a motion and a second uh, to waive the first reading. Any discussion? Hearing none. Vote, please, Deb. Harley. Yes. Brad. Yes. Rodney. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Don. Yes. Jody. Yes. Motion carried. Can I just oh. say something about this, please? Sure. Did come I miss my chance? No. No. Come on up to the podium can and. Can you stay here, please? Oh, sure. I think you can hear me. Or you will be able to by the time I'm done. I took uh, the proposed waves for what, what would be 2026 and applied it to the bill I just got. And my bill will more than double in 2026. And that's a $400 a year increase for me. And I, like a lot of other people in this house, live on a fixed income. Not only that, but you're going to add 4% on top of that for, how knows, for who knows how long. Now, 
we've got inevitable tax increases, utility increases, and all other kinds of increases. I just think that there should be money out there from the government who likes to spend money on parks in California and green deals that you should be able to get money to pay for this rather than putting this all on our backs. That's all I have to say. I think it's, I think it's an incredibly huge burden to put on the people in this, in this town. And you know there's a lot of old people like me. Now, we're not going to get Medicare increases or increases every year to help pay for this. And I don't use that much water. I feel for the people that use a lot more water than I do. But, I mean, their rates are going to be, I, I used 227 cubic feet. That's not a lot of water. But my service charge and my infrastructure fee are going to be the same as, as a person who uses 800 cubic feet. The only difference is going to be the amount in the water that I use. So I just I don't see how that's fair to me at all for not using water. Okay, just I. How much? How much is this? How? You got three hundred and seventeen thousand dollars yet from a rescue from the rescue plan that isn't earmarked for anything. Why can't we go after money from the government for projects such as this that they have promised all these states that they could have? Has anybody looked? Have you looked? So I one. Yeah, go ahead. Sure. Yeah. Um, so just real quick, uh, the service fee is a set fee. The infrastructure fee is based on the water meter size, um, which correlates with your you know, capacity to use water and what we need at the plant to treat it. So that is um, adjusted for size. Um, on that, um, you know, the, the simplest way to put it is this is an unfunded mandate placed on the city. We've been told you have to meet these requirements, figure it out. Um, we Why said, don't you find funding for it? So, um, Fortunately, most other cities have, are, or will eventually be going through a similar process as the DNR, you know, addresses these regulations. Um, we certainly have and, and, and will keep an eye out for, for money to fund this. Um, you know, there may be some funds through the State Revolving Loan Fund um, that they are going to be forgiving as grants. Um, you know, so there, there's that potential there, but that's an unknown. Uh, you know, the ARPA funding that, that hasn't been earmarked, that's something that, you know, the city could put towards this project. Um, but when you're, you know, looking at a, um, a $15 million project, um, you can only kind of shave so much off the edges. There's, there's not a, a, a large, unless you're considered a disadvantaged community, um, which Algona would not qualify for, and that's based on um, a variety of factors, but mainly what you're, your um, median household income is as a city, and you know where that relates to where your, your, your sewer bills are. Um, unless there's something out there, there's really not any federal grants out there. Um, CDBG would be one that the city could apply for. Um, we could get up to 600000 but with that, you federalize the project. You have to pay things to make wages. You have to do the environmental review, and when you place that on a general contract around a 15 million dollar project, you very, I mean, I used to do CDBG administration, and it's like you very quickly, it's like, well, you're probably going to be paying close to the same amount in extra to get that grant money. Um, it just complicates so, things. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, it, you know, we are on a number of different organizations and email lists and different programs. If there's something out there that pops up as a, as a grant or a larger loan that we we think we could take advantage of, we, we certainly would explore that. Um, the unfortunate thing is, I guess, yeah, the, the simplest way, it's an unfunded mandate. And with yeah. that funding has to, to come from the users, and it's... I find it hard to believe that you can't find money from the government somewhere. They got money for everything else. And as far as your infrastructure funding that they put out, I stepped through many of those webinars, and it's always disadvantaged communities. 
disadvantaged communities. Disadvantaged communities, and unfortunately, well, this right are going to be disadvantaged. Uh, currently, we do not qualify to apply for any of those grants. Karen, I share your frustrations with this project. It seems ridiculous that we're being forced to do this for the minimal gain that we'll that we'll have in phosphorus and nitrogen numbers. I know that we've all done a lot of a lot of discussion on this, trying to figure out any ways around this, and unfortunately, it's being forced on us. And as far as the disadvantaged community, I, I think if I we tried looking into that, I think the sewer bill would have to be over 90 bucks a month for, for an average citizen for for us to qualify for their numbers, and it's, it's very frustrating. I, I know I share your frustration, and we we have been looking into all the options that we can because this is a huge project and it's a huge burden on, on everyone. It's going to be the employers, it's going to be the citizens, it's everyone. And, and it's just really unfortunate that we have to do this for what, what I feel is the minimal benefit or the minimal reduction in something that's going to be seen in the Gulf of Mexico that it, it, it's going to be almost immeasurable, immeasurable from what I can tell. So it's, it's really not something that we can, that we have a lot of control over that it's something that's being forced down on us and all these other communities around us too. Well, I, I understand that. I understand that. But you have to understand that there are a lot of retired people that are not getting this kind of a raise every year to deal with this. So our income is basically just going to keep dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping. And, and add to that the cost of everything else that's going on right now. Yeah. It's, 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 Insane. It's insane to do this. I I appreciate your time yeah. and listening to me rant, mm -hmm. yeah. but uh, I just hope I have another very new Sunday. Also, we certainly don't and have enjoyed coming up with a plan to have fun for this, and I'm sure none of you enjoy having this no. vote on this. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's more of a time I see a, a program out there that might work for us. I'm emailing it to categories, hey, can we qualify for this, can we apply for this? And sometimes it's like, yeah, let's try, but the federal grants are so highly, highly competitive that you're like a million to one that you would get the grant. But we're looking into things and trying. Sure. But moving forward, we have to look at it as we're going to have to fund this project without any grants. Currently. If we get a grant, great, it's going to come down off the top of the cost of the project, but we can't guarantee we're going to get anything. Yeah. And yeah, in 2023, 2024, if our numbers come in and they're good, and yeah, we can certainly amend this ordinance again and say, hey, we're not going to need this much and we're going to, you know, flatten it out. Mm -hmm. um, but we'd, we'd rather be in a position where we're planning for what, based on the best knowledge we have today, planning for that and then have good news um, as opposed to hoping that something happens that we aren't even sure what that is yet. Mm -hmm. So this is all coming down from the EPA, correct? So, yeah, the, yeah, the, the, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. the EPA delegates the Clean Water Authority to the, the most of the states that accepted it, but yeah, so the DNR, and then uh, I believe it was in 2010-ish around then, the state did their Iowa nutrient reduction strategy. Um, and that basically identified how we're going to go about taking Iowa, reducing Iowa's share out of um, what's you know going into the, the Mississippi and, and down into the dead zone. Um, the overwhelming majority of the nitrates are from non-point source, you know, grass. Um, I certainly have a different philosophy than the state does on how they've gone about regulating this and that they have um, really looked at the cities and, and the, the other you know entities with permits and say, well, we can easily regulate them, so let's just go crazy. And then, you know, ag, here's some voluntary programs and some money as well to encourage you to do the programs. Um, when, yeah, we're going to be, I mean, us and other towns are going to be spending millions of dollars to make a fractional impact and you look around and where are the nitrates coming from? I, I think they've, they've been off on their focus, but that's the powers that be. Um, and, and well, <laughs> those powers that be, I would like to say we vote on them on both the state and federal level. 
But unfortunately, I think they find it much easier just to turn it over to agencies like the EPA and the DNR, the Iowa DNR, to just do this and with very little oversight. So I'm not sure unless you specifically talk to your legislators and encourage them to be more proactive in this. Um, yeah, I think it's something free running now with the EPA and the DNR. There is a very powerful lobby at the city house, which I may not have to name what they are during the open meeting, mm -hmm. that I think is got a lot of pull. Uh, the city is getting regulated for a lot of this and not the bag. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so just real quick, this is from the Iowa Nutrient Reduction Strategy Report. Um, just while reading the record, so uh, both non-point source agricultural land and urban runoff and point source such as wastewater treatment plant loads play critical roles in Iowa's water quality. Uh, the nutrient reduction strategy estimates that upgrading treatment plants across the state will result in a statewide in 4% nitrogen and 16% phosphorus reduction while non-point sources will need to result in statewide in 41% nitrogen and 29% uh, phosphorus reduction. So they are you know, regulating those two entities um, to have different kind of views on mm -hmm. their balance. Yeah. Um, you know, the questions being raised in other communities that I've worked with on, like, well, what if, what if we don't do this? Do we have to? Um, and it's like, well, you could say no, um, then you're going to get sued, and it's you know, th this is, these are requirements that have been in effect since the 1970s with the Clean Water Act. It's going to get upheld that, yeah, this is reasonable regulation and jurisdiction. And so then you're going to get put under a consent decree. You're going to be required to do it either way. And then you're going to have the DNR and the EPA over your shoulder and, you know, for several years to come to make sure that you're complying with that. Yeah. There's, there's not a, you know, let's see, disincorporate. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and I want to say, through all of our conversations about this rate structure, we have definitely kept that fixed income individual or family in mind doing this, yeah. that what's going to be the least impact on them? I mean, there's going to be an impact on everybody, but we try to keep a smaller impact on that fixed income level than the corporations and stuff. So it, it's yeah. a hard line to draw in the sand. Yeah. Well, and we know that, you know, you guys, your city staff has certainly done everything you possibly can. We've worked with it for several months with you. And, and it, you know, there's all kinds of scenarios you guys have shown us. And so we know that you're doing the best that you can. And with federal regulations, what do you do, you know, so. And, and not that this, I mean, it doesn't change anything, but when you look at our, our current small user rates, we've had a very low rate for a very long time. Yeah. That was nice while it lasted. Right. Um, unfortunately, that is no longer um, yeah. going to be an option. Yeah, and people get used to that, and that's understandable, and, you know, but, yeah. Well, it's just the start of what we know we're going to see in this process and what we're going to hear in this right. process. Yeah. And mm -hmm. yeah. Again, we, we'll always be there to listen and try to, if we can adjust, we will, but I appreciate everybody's work. And I, what Tyler said it best, I think we're all filled that same way. So, yeah. Yeah. but uh, we still got to move forward at this point. So I'd move to approve the first reading. Second. We have a motion from Rodney, second from Don to approve this first reading. Is there any further discussion? I would just say that Dan and I appreciate all your work as well. And I would just appreciate in the future that if anything does come up, that if there is any nitrogen or phosphorus credits or anything like that that we can get out of this that even though I know we put a lot of work and, and cost in or money into this already I still think it's worth looking at anything that may come up in the future as the city these other cities as the legislators may be getting pushed back if there's anything that comes up I think we need to keep looking at this and if there's a way out of this I know there are our current plan needs a retrofitter would need an upgrade but Two to three million dollars is a lot better than eighteen million dollars. So I think anything that we can do to continue looking at this is a good thing. Yeah, 
been on the, the credit trading, there has been more talk of that up now again. I think it's kind of been more on um, the uh, commercial and ag side, but we, we have talked with WHKS on like, well, is there any reason why a city couldn't buy credits and we can reduce what we need to, to plan for at the plant and, and reduce our costs and you know offset it um, you know, by restoring wetlands or something like that. So um, yeah, we'll continue looking at those and then certainly welcome any um, examples or ideas that the council has and, and the public on um, how how do we how do we best balance moving forward. And that's what Tanner I was approached about wetlands credits. Uh, it's something that a couple of other communities are doing around this. I got a hold of Kevin Grace at WHKS. He said if we want to use some of our sponsored project dollars that we will get from the super plan upgrade for credits, that would be good. But it's not going to save us any money on the sewer plan. Our sewer plan is to a point whether we have to reduce the nitrates and phosphorus or not, it's going to be about a 15 to 16 million dollar retro on the plant because it's old. It's it, you know, it's what 40 some years old from the beginning, and it's just worn out and needs to be replaced. Yeah, I mean, you even bought those credits from some of the past you have to plant to treat. Mm -hmm. So, at any time a webinar comes up about funding from the government, uh, I'm listening in and then I'm talking to Kevin to see if it would if we can qualify or if it would apply to us. Any other discussion? We have a motion and a second. Vote please, Deb. Harley? Yes. Fred? Yes. Rodney? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Don? Yes. Joey? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Agenda item number 11. Uh, this is a resolution pertaining to the 2022 23 budget. Um, this is the uh, same item on the budget amendment that we had the public hearing on earlier. Uh, this resolution approves uh, budget amendment. Um, as uh, noticed, um, for $153,409 um, for additional expenses to public safety and community economic development funds. Move to approve. Second. We have a motion from Don, second from Rodney. Uh, any discussion? Hearing then roll call, Deb. Curly? Yes. Brad? Yes. Rodney? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Don? Yes. Joey? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Agenda item number 12, this is a resolution approving the annual street finance report. Every year we submit a report to the state um, showing um, where revenues came from and how we spent them on street projects. And this is primarily prompted um, through the road use tax, um, which the city um, receives from the state to go towards street operations and maintenance. The so page two of this report, I think, is kind of the most interesting but it shows uh, our expenses um, out of our road use tax. Um, we spent $863,000. Um, it doesn't go. Majority of that is spent on the wages um, and then um, materials, equipment, operating supplies, um, as well as um, the dump truck that was purchased this last year um, within the street department um, to uh, kind of fund our operations and then. Um, we have a few items that come out in general. Um, and then the other big ones are a debt service on capital projects, and then the closed out completed capital projects um, are reported as well. So it's just kind of a, a summary uh, report to the state on where our money's going and what they send us. Motion to approve the annual street financial report. Second. We have a motion from Rodney, second from Tyler. Uh, any discussion? Vote please, Deb. Harley? Yes. Brad? Yes. Rodney? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Don? Yes. Joey? Yes. Rodney? Yes. Harley? Yes. Rodney? Yes. 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 Motion carried. Agenda item number 13. Uh, this is a resolution pertaining to the CDBG housing program. Sure. Uh, about a year ago, we were awarded a CDPG owner occupied exterior housing rehab grant, um, right around $249,000. Uh, we did tours of three of the homes this fall. Uh, the NICOG, or Biocosmic Governance, is ready to award the bid on one of the homes. 
We cannot do repairs totaling over $24,989, except for the lead mitigation can be on the top of that. Uh, this home at 290 East Kennedy, we did receive two bids on. Uh, the SPI services is a little bit of $27,000, and I thought we were recommending we approve this bid. The other two homes I believe will probably be approving at the next council meeting. They were single bids. We only have one bid from the contractor on each home. So we had to get approval from the state to award those bids since we did single bids in that competitive bid. But this one, if we award this tonight, the contractor can get started on repairs on the home immediately. Move to approve. I'll second. We have a motion from Harley, second from Jody. Any discussion? Vote please, Deb. Harley? Yes. Ron? Yes. Rodney? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Don? Yes. Jody? Yes. Motion carried. Agenda item number 14, this is a resolution concerning the sanitary sewer waiver policies. So this had come up earlier this year, we discussed it earlier in the amendments here about uh, adopting a new sewer waiver policy for pools. Um, this is kind of prompted in 2020. COVID, um, when the pool was closed, um, we did a lot of sewer waivers for people that bought pools, just as kind of an offset. Well, we continue to get a lot of requests for those. Uh, so at the direction of the council, we put together a policy uh, for, uh, for users to submit, and then kind of the standards um, for how we would be approved uh, for filling a residential swimming pool. Uh, so it would have to be uh, submitted in advance. Um, Res residential pools only can't be connected to the sanitary sewers, so the theory is they would just get the credit for the equivalent usage fee since it's not going in the sanitary sewer and it's not being treated. Um, they would, as part of the application, they would need to submit you know, the dimensions and volume of their pool. That would be used to calculate the usage um, subject to uh, you know, a, a verification or a spot inspection by city staff that Yep, they've got a pool and it's, it, it is, you know, it's the size that they said that it was. Um, and then, and you would calculate what that usage would be and a credit could be um, issued. Um, you could only apply for um, one credit every calendar year. So you can only apply for one credit. Am I reading this right that water leaks, watering a new lawn, and or landscaping, and the filling of pools, are those one credit pick and choose which one? Yeah. So, so the, the form that was uploaded, that's a draft update of our current form. So right now the okay. policy that the city has in effect is a sewer waiver policy for establishing a new yard and for a water leak. So this would be the, the third waiver okay. policy. So that it, this would be independent of those. But okay. as far as okay. filling the pool, you can get one waiver Just, per year. But okay. If you're watering a yard, you can also apply for it. Yeah. Okay. A new yard, I should say, you can also apply for that also. Okay. Thank you. Move to approve the resolution. Second. We have a motion from Don, second from Rodney. Um, any other discussion? Hearing none, vote please, Deb. Harley? Yes. Ron? Yes. Rodney? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Don? Yes. Julie? Yes. Motion carried. Agenda item number 15 uh, approves the pay application for the library renovation project. Uh, this approves pay application number 13 in the amount of $76,890.28. Um, this is releasing um, the retaining on the interior portion, which has been completed. Um, so it's for work already um, earned that um, since we've been in there occupying it, um, and it's uh, the uh, architect has recommended we re release that retaining. And then with the exterior improvements that are now underway, the uh, uh, labor and materials retained for that will start to reaccumulate, and then once we've accepted the project, we'll release that as the final retaining. So work is underway on that now and going to be done this year? They started on August 22nd. Uh, the timeline that they shared shows it being finished in February um, with some of the final um, 
the kind of window installation. Um, it's really, I think, just going to depend on uh, how many people are going to be on the job site on, on a given day. But the, the goal is to get it wrapped up this calendar year shortly after the calendar year. Um, so far, we haven't heard of any supply chain issues. Um, that was a cause of delay for a while. But as far as we know now, everything else is either here or on track to be here on time. Okay, move to approve. Second. We have a motion from Harley, uh, second from Brad. Any other discussion? Vote please, Deb. Harley? Yes. Brad? Yes. Rodney? Yes. Yes. Don? Yes. Joey? Yes. Motion carried. Agenda item number 16, this is appointments to the Cemetery Board of Trustees. The terms of John um, Hank and David Van Gorkum have expired. Um, do we? Yeah, I spoke with John. John would like to stay on the, the Cemetery Board of Trustees and would would run for another term. Okay. I guess I'd recommend that we approve John. Okay. Um, anyone visited with David? I did talk to David and he said he would continue his. Okay. The both of them. Okay. So would someone like to make a motion then for both, we'll do them both together? Yeah. Okay. Sure. I'd make a motion we approve John Hank and David Van Gorkum to the Cemetery Board of Trustees. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion from Rodney, second from Jody. Um, any discussion? Hearing none, vote please, Deb. Harley? Yes. Fred? Yes. Rodney? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Don? Yes. Jody? Yes. Motion carried. Uh, thank you, John and David, both for uh, your willingness to serve again. And thank you for checking with them and asking them. So, Jen, I'm number 17. Uh, this is the second notification in terms expiring on the Retail Revolving Loan Fund Committee. Uh, Betty Kunkel and Teresa Kellenberger, their terms expire September the 16th, and this is a mayoral appointment. And this is um, just the second notification there. And agenda item number 18 is a notice of uh, resignation and future appointment to the Parks and Rec Commission. Zoe Dow has resigned from the commission. She'll be moving outside of the city limits. So therefore, she's ineligible to continue to serve. Zoe's uh, term is a full six-year term, and this is a council appointment. Her term does expire the end of the year of 2025. So we want to uh, keep that in mind and, and be checking um, around to see if someone would like to fill those terms out on the Parks and Rec Commission. So with that, that brings us to the end of our published agenda. It's uh, 5.56, and I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, thank you very much. The meeting's adjourned.